Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I want to discuss systems that I don't usually discuss too often, and that's plasma systems. Lately, I've been getting many, many, many messages on how I want to create my own plasma, how do I build a plasma, what do I, what do you recommend for a plasma, and a lot of guys start with, you know, just a hardware aspect, and, you know, then they, they start thinking about the floating head design or torch height controllers, but what I don't ever hear mentioned and what's not really discussed because I don't feel that everybody is really aware of what they're dealing with when it comes to the difficulties with plasma, because they are a different CNC robot, is really the the excess amount of EMI you're dealing with when you build one of these machines. If you guys are choosing to purchase a cheap version of a plasma system, one of the off brands, um, you know, if you're buying them for two, three hundred dollars, remember you're dealing with an obvious plasma system that in one way or another has corners cut. And when I say that, it doesn't mean that it's a piece of crap. It just means that, of course, it's not a hypotherm or a brand of equivalent quality that all ends have been met when it comes to shielding, when it comes to grounding. Now, what a lot of guys don't calculate in is the actual robot being precise. And when I say that, it sounds kind of silly. Let me explain what I mean. If you go out and you purchase that $300 plasma cutter and you decide to hook it up to your CNC robot and turn it into a plasma cutter in CNC form, one of the biggest things you're going to be dealing with is the mass production of EMI from a plasma system. Now, regardless of the cheap cutter or the hypotherm or whatever other cutter you want to go with, you are going to still be, be dealing with large amounts of EMI. It's, it's just a byproduct of mass, mass, mass current being used and mass voltage. And then you have this, this dilemma of dealing with sensitive signal control electronics like your CNC controller. And when you start introducing them together is when the problems usually arise. Now, I always recommend, of course, spacing your controller away from the table itself because basically around your table, as soon as that arc is fired, you're going to find that you have basically an EMI cloud hovering around the table. And of course, we can't see it, but your electronics definitely know it's there. When you start getting ghosting in the machine, weird things happening, you'll notice switches are getting tripped. You'll, you, I mean, if the machine goes awry, you miss steps, anything can happen. And if it destroys substrate, it can be extremely costly and frustration. There's no words to explain. Guys that have experienced this that are listening to this are shaking their head right now and laughing probably because they know exactly what I'm talking about the guys that haven't built the system yet and never experienced it are, are probably now intrigued by what I'm talking about at least I hope they are I am telling you now and I cannot emphasize this enough and I've said this before on many different components with CNC CNC once you do your research and everybody out there I feel with the internet and with what's available in general knowledge, you can take your time over the course of a week, a day, however good you are at using the internet, and really research and find out what makes the most sense. Call the manufacturers of your plasma systems and find out how they're made if it's not a reputable brand. If you're going with Hypotherm, why I keep bringing Hypotherm up is because the article that I'm about to present you was written by Hypotherm. I recommend Hypotherm because they literally produce some of the best plasma systems in the country okay they are amazing units they are shielded really well um, and again they perform you know at a much much higher grade level than most other plasmas when combined when combined with CNC now remember what I just said when combined with CNC if you're just cutting by hand EMI is never an issue because you're not integrating CNC motion control once you integrate CNC motion control, that's when you run into headaches with different scenarios. I'm trying to help you in the sense that this article I found, it's written by Hypotherm. It's probably one of the best, most in-depth articles I've ever found on recommended grounding and shielding practices for CNC plasma system. This article is not short. It actually encompasses spending quite a bit of time quite a bit of money and why I say quite a bit of money it's not that it's so expensive but of course I validate time with money so if you don't know what you're doing you are going to spend a lot of time reading this you are going to spend more time understanding what they're talking about with bus bars grounding rods um, having grounding rods installed um, again running ground drains from everything that they have outlined and again, they're doing it from the gantry right here, and they're doing the base table. I mean, they are literally covering everything, guys, everything. Now, my guys out there who are running, who are actually running CNC mills or CNC routers, EMI is present. 
we know it's present, but it's certainly not present like with a plasma system. Plasmas are different animals, guys. They are just different animals. When you're dealing with that kind of electricity and that kind of amperage and that kind of current over a consistent period, and once again, we're dealing with DC electronics that are you know, in close proximity typically to the system, EMI is just inevitable. So we have to do everything we can possibly do to prevent it from penetrating the system. Now, I have guys out there who've, who've actually asked me questions, and I'm not talking about just average Joes. I've actually discussed this with other engineers. And I can tell you right now that I've been asked in, in general form from other engineers, is there a way we can just make a general box that would basically you know, stop EMI on every system out there, you know, bar none? There is no definitive answer to correct everybody's EMI problem because every environment is different. Every uh, piece of equipment is different, and it's not dollar practical to do that. It's much better to go and say, okay, I've corrected the issue by going and taking preventative measures in the sense that I will build my table to the best possible practice that I can find. And once again, if anyone wants to argue this, this is hypertherm. They have all their contact information. I would contact them and talk to their engineers. They have some of the best in the country that deal with nothing but these animals. And I'm telling you right now, if you read this article, and I'm posting it for everybody to read, I hope everybody checks it out it will teach you something. I mean, they do have wiring schematics, and again, it is in-depth. It's a very in-depth article. Hypotherm is, is you know, well, well-renowned and are well-renowned in the sense of support. If you needed to call them and ask them a question about this, believe me, uh, they would answer it. I guarantee you they would. Um, again, is it an end-all, be-all to everybody's EMI solution? No, it's not. You're gonna definitely have to go by a case-by-case -case basis. I will say this, if you go through and read this article closely and take your time and thoroughly understand it and thoroughly implement what you're reading. The odds of you having EMI is reduced probably in, this, in the sense of 92 to 95% because they are that thorough in what you're reading here. Okay, this is definitely, definitely, definitely an article that's worth actually reading. It's an article that I think if you're really looking at a plasma system and you haven't picked out you know which plasma cutter am I going with I get guys telling me all the time I'm going with the budget model or I'm buying this budget model or I'm buying that budget model the best thing you can do is buy the model that best supports the least amount of problems and I know that sounds kinda of silly but realistically the more renowned models are the ones that, of course, are going to give you less issues. If you have to spend $2,000 to buy a plasma system to make sure that your system is running fine, I would do that because I'll tell you what, you ask any guy out there who's had CNC EMI problems, especially with a plasma system or problems with a plasma system, if it's worth it after they encounter the problem because I'll tell you what their answer will be. Hell yes. Because until you've gone through that kind of frustration, and believe me, Nothing sucks worse than you've invested thousands, and I mean thousands because there's no plasma systems out there for 800 bucks where you're going to actually have a really, really nice unit unless everything is used and you, you basically hit the lottery finding a, a gold mine in parts. Odds are you got a couple thousand dollars invested, and then you have missed cuts, all kinds of EMI issues. I'm telling you right now, you can have the best controller in the world. I don't care who builds it, but if you have EMI, you're going to be plagued. It's a cancer. And if you don't eliminate the cancer, I'm telling you now, you'll, you, you're better, you, you want to shoot yourself. I'm telling you. It's horrible. So I hope that this article will at least help you and guide you in the right direction. It's worth a read, worth the time. You know, take your time, go over your system. And again, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy that sits there and says, well, my system's fine. I don't see myself having to do all this. You know what? If you don't have a problem, yet if it's not visible yet and again you just built your system and typically what I hear is oh, I'm good my system's stable and then I say well how long has the system been running a week to me that's not stable stable is when the system's been running six months to a year that's when you find true stability if you've only run it a week odds are unless you're running it completely full time you haven't identified some issues that may be present and just haven't visualized themselves yet. So think in them terms. CNC stability is based over course of time. Whatever length of time you feel confident with would be the actual term of stability. So 
think in them in that terminology and it makes a lot of sense the longer the time duration you know you're probably good I would say after about six month mark you're golden that's about when you know this the machine is dialed in you might encounter every now and then a little blip I mean it could be anything but if it's a problem that you can quickly identify oh I see what it is okay it's good then you're golden if not if it's a problem that keeps just arising and arising and I have guys that deal with this all the time oh it doesn't matter it's screwed up only this once you know it does that every you know 10 15 runs it's still present it's still present and it's gonna happen again randomly until you correct it so one of the biggest things to do is work at being proactive don't wait for the problem to arise correct it before it does so it doesn't ruin that that client's product or it doesn't ruin you know all that work you've put into buying good substrates and trying to get everything done appropriately when you think about it it just costs you more time and money take your time even if you're a guy that like I said has a system that's already built and you feel it's stable over the course of a week break the job down a lot of guys don't think about that they want to try to do it all in one day don't do that Break it down. Break down a little bit. Shield, you know, work on the gantry. Work on shielding the gantry. Work on work on going over everything. Work on, you know, putting the bus bars in and everything. And then just continuously keep going. You know, if the machine is truly stable, if you break down that job, it'll be stable over duration anyways. The only thing you're really doing is kind of breaking it down so it's easier on your time frame and easier on your mind. The more you do, this is tedious work. It has to be done right. And that's why I say take your time. A lot of guys, I mean, I'll talk to them. They'll say they have any EMI issues or issues that sound very, very similar to EMI. I've done this so long now, I can pretty much pinpoint them. And nine out of ten times, they'll tell me, oh, within an hour, I had the machine all grounded. No, you didn't. I know that that's not true. And realistically, if you feel you did, then something is being cut as far as corners. So I'm telling you now, if it's done right, this is not an hour job. It's, it's definitely time consuming. I would say even if you're experienced with, with at least basic electronics, you're probably looking at five to six hours to make sure everything is done properly. And again, even the grounding rod, if you're putting that in, you got to let that usually dry overnight if you're really doing it right, depending upon you know what kind of ground we're dealing with and what you're actually mounting with. But I would think about that. I would really, really think about it and, you know, analyze your system and just go over what you're reading here and think about it. Because if your system is performing as it should, then I would read this and implement it over time, at least in the sense that, you know, to the amount that you feel comfortable doing. If you don't feel like doing the entire system, you can ground just general like I recommend for uh, normal CNC use and you're fine. This is extreme. This is very extreme. This is extreme because plasma systems are extreme. And again, I want you guys to have the best information. This is information I recommend because I would do it myself. Um, once again, plasmas, they're just a different animal. And they, they deserve respect. They deserve a different kind of respect. So I hope this has been beneficial to you in the sense that I'm bringing it to light. I hope you guys take some time and read it. And again, if you have any questions, my name is Vince. I run eDealers Direct Automation on eBay. Um, again, you can contact me through eBay messaging or you can contact me through my own email. It's storm, S-T-O-R-M, 2313 at gmail.com. Now, guys, I am getting busier and busier. I just want you guys all to know that if you contact me, I'm not being disrespectful. I will answer you at my, my best free time. Again, I need a break, too, and I will get back with you as soon as I possibly can where my mind is now in place, and we'll discuss it. We could set up a time to talk if you want to discuss things on the phone. I kind of prefer talking on the phone because nine out of ten times we can cover a hell of a lot more information, and this way you guys become empowered faster. Thank you. Take care.